This is Larry the Barberman at the American Barber Shop in Santa Ana, Orange County, California. Today I'm interviewing Mike and Roland, employees of the American Barber Shop. The American Barber Shop is a very big barber shop with 13 chairs and 16 different barbers. There's music blaring continuously with a steady flow of beverages. The shop has an eclectic array of furniture as well as barbers. It's like organized chaos in a professional environment. Would that be a fair assumption, guys? I think you couldn't have said any better. <laughs> so I'm just here, like I said, this is an off-the-cuff interview. I just want to find out a bit about you guys and the American Barber Shop because I think you've got something very special going on here and the number of employees you have going and it's working so successfully. I want to kind of pick your brains a little bit, if you like. Absolutely. So. Mike, tell me a little bit about how you found yourself here at the American Barber. So I found myself here through my friend Pope. We had been working with each other uh, in the barbering industry for a few years, jumping around from uh, Irvine, South Coast area, uh, like Costa Mesa, and another shop out in Stanton. We got tired of our atmosphere. We just never found the right fit, the right shop, the right energy. She had uh, taken off and come over here through a friend of hers named Sophie, and she kind of dragged me along with her. And I came in and I just never looked back. I love the people, I love the different styles, the creativity, the energy. Uh, the talent that's in the shop is second to none. Okay, perfect. And yourself, Roland? Uh, I started working here, uh, stopping by one day and uh, wanting to meet the guys because I followed them on Instagram and, um, you know, just wanted to come in and uh, work here. Okay, perfect. And do you want to tell me a little bit about what it's like? to work with so many great guys in this big shop. Give me your kind of take on how it feels to work here. Well, everyone's different here, so, um, you know, you pick up a little bit from everybody. And especially with all the talent in here, you know, um, you know, just learning from each other, you know, getting better and, you know, doing great haircuts. And what's your take on that, Mike? I definitely think it, uh it makes a great range for the shop itself, whether it goes to your personality in general. Like Roland was saying, everybody here is really, really diverse. Um, no one person here has the same kind of attitude, personality, style. When you see us, we have a tendency, we usually all dress up in white button-up shirts. So you'll see a lot of the same style, but then once we kind of all go out afterwards, you can really see the range that we really have in the shop. The talent, same thing, like Roland was saying. Um, you'll pick up different cutting techniques <coughs> from the other barbers, like I myself can say, I've been cutting for 11 years, and for about eight years of it, I always had the same technique constantly. It wasn't until I came into American Barbershop where I started watching guys like Roland, like Alex, Tiz, other barbers around the area. I started seeing different things, and it made me want to try a different way. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, so why not try the same thing with haircuts? You know, to try to improve myself and diversify my my technique. Okay, so like I said at the beginning, George, your boss, the owner of this shop, he's done an extremely good job in actually bringing you guys together and bringing the shop together to make it an absolute success. In your own words and opinion, what do you think George looks for when he employs someone to work at the American Barber Shop? Someone that loves house music. If you don't like house music, <laughs> you'll go crazy in here. Not only that, it's like, I don't even think, George's not even around that much anymore to um, hire anybody, so Mostly every, everybody that starts working here is because of us, you know, they know us or we're the ones that actually do the recruiting or hiring or whatever you want to call it, you know. Um, we usually bring people within, like we never, I mean, we could, but mostly we just use people that we know and, you know, that we trust. We like to keep it, like I was saying before, like we like to keep it to where we know we're not going to have any issues. The shop runs itself, we run ourselves, everybody has, pretty much we're all independent contractors. but. We all work within a team and a unit, but we all know what the main shop standard standard is. And I, George just trusts us to kind of, you know, know who to bring in, who not to bring in. So when we give him the word that we don't feel someone can actually really be a good fit in the long run, he definitely takes our word for it and just kind of trusts that we know what we're talking about. Here we don't have no managers. We don't have nobody, you know, breathing down your back, telling you to hurry up or, you know, um, micromanaging you, you know. Here we do, we already know what we have to do and, you know, that's it. We're all adults and, at the end of the day, we're here to cut hair and make money and, you know, that's it. Yeah. Okay, guys, so now I want to get a little bit of history on American, uh, the American Barbershop success. 
talk me through how long the American Barbershop has been established and the number of chairs you started at and how you ended up with 13. The Santa Ana location, it's been here for what, almost six years now? Yeah, since 2010. Uh, 2010. Started off with, I believe, four barbers at the time. And then from there, just progressively added on one barber at a time to the point like where we had to actually build out extra stations and hit a 13 chair mark. Okay, so it was, it was organic growth yeah. based on the success of the shop. Well, I know this location, especially with, within downtown Santa Ana, this location has been through a lot of different businesses. And so when George had actually opened up this location, a lot of people didn't really see much success in it because of so much failure happening in this specific area in downtown Santa Ana. It, it just didn't see it coming. And then finally, George just had a dream and went for it and just took off with it. And, you know, just pushed on with haircuts, starting with four barbers, like we mentioned. And before you know it, people just saw what American Barbershop was, what the energy was, what the attitude was. And great haircuts, a great atmosphere. You know, they loved their experience. You know, I think that's what a lot of barbershops sometimes miss, is that experience. And people were actually getting that here. And so he had no choice but to, you know, keep adding on before you know it. You know, you got what you got now. Mostly, mostly word of mouth, too, you know, people coming in here and experiencing what they experienced and going on and telling their friends, oh, they got the loud music, or they're cool barbers over there. Something and all this, different. You know, something different. And that's what, you know, that's how I think we got our reputation, you know? And of course, things like social media that nowadays, Instagram, Facebook, everything, it definitely helped grow exponentially, especially with the barbershop as a whole and as well as our individual Instagrams. People got to see so many different sides and looks of what the barbershop was and what the energy was here. So you talk a lot about the quality of your haircuts and obviously the great atmosphere. Do you actually educate other barbers outside of this shop? Do you have like an educational program of sorts? Um, sometimes, I mean, we, I've done it a couple times here at the shop, but most of the time we, um, we sometimes do uh, platform work like for hair shows and stuff like that for different uh, pomade companies for you know whatever something like that give me some names <clears throat> um, we worked with Layride um, we worked with Barber Society um, you know different we've been to uh, the Barbershop Connect as well Barbershop Connect um, we've done stuff in New York we've done stuff in Vegas um, Long Beach so um, is that IBS when you was in New yeah. York yeah that was IBS yeah okay and that was on the Layride stand was it mm -hmm. yeah you're opening up another big shop yeah. in Los Angeles. Tell me what you aim to do there, what's going to be different from these shops or what's going to be the same as these shops. I feel like the shop is definitely going to be, American Barbershop has its own energy. I think we have to kind of transfer that over there. I don't think it's going to change much. It's just going to be an expansion of what we have and what we've learned from here and definitely taking that into the Echo Park location and just advancing from that. It's definitely going to be a different uh, set and group of people you know, um, the atmosphere in LA compared to the atmosphere in Orange County definitely differs. Styles of cuts also. Uh, so it's gonna definitely have a lot more range, but I feel like we're just gonna kind of take the same thing, the same energy, the same attitude, you know. Music, experience, great cuts, great, you know, experiences for people to come in. And one of, like you said, or Roland had mentioned, uh, word of mouth, where people are gonna wanna talk about it, say, man, I went to this barbershop, I had this experience, you have to come check it out. We wanna definitely make it a place where you have to wanna come in. You know, even if you're not even get a haircut, just to stop by, walk in, and just check it out. Okay. And do you think the decor is going to be exactly the same? I mean, this is going to be a, a hard shot to duplicate because it seems like over the years you've kind of built on top. You know, I don't, I can't see you having moose heads and, you know what I mean, and vintage barber poles like that one. Oh well, George is a. This is this, is this is actually a second shot that almost looks just like like. Um, you know, identical to this. This first shop was in Corona, and I seen. I haven't been there myself, but I've seen pictures of it, and it looks almost identical to this. So it pulls along I know, the same court. I know that Echo Park is gonna be just like this, if not, you know, maybe even better. Cause I'm already looking at the walls that he's doing over there, and it already looks like this. And I mean, there, I don't know. I'm just excited to see what it's gonna look like. It's really interesting now, cause I've been to Scoreham in. Holland in Rotterdam and it's funny your shop is like an American version of Scorum so <laughs> that's a big yeah, compliment yeah when I walked in it's got that same kind of environment all you guys are kind of just in your own world just entertaining the, 
customers continuously, you know, there's not one, one person down, you're kind of like all on it and creating that kind of buzz and vibe in the shop, which oh, is yeah, good to never, see. It's, it's never magical quite to see. in the shop, ever. <laughs> Tell me, what are you guys, outside of the shop, what are you guys really enjoying about barbering at the moment, right at this present moment in time? Uh, directed to yourself, Mike. I'm definitely enjoying the fact that it's expanding. Um, it, it's picking up uh, a momentum again. From when I started about 11 years ago, barbering wasn't that big of a deal. It was just kind of, you know, a job that you got into. And, you know, I, I fell into it because of being a shop hand and being around the barbershop my entire life. It wasn't something that just everybody wanted to jump and go do. Now it's picked up this, it, it, it's a lifestyle now. You know, you go out there and you have different styles of barber. You know, you have, you know, at the American Barbershop, you have, you know, very hip hop organized shops and you have more sports oriented shops. Um, I come from a shop that was uh, all sports and you walked in there and it just had this nothing old school uh, sports illustrated everywhere and it gave like this energy that and momentum. But now you're starting to find all these shops that are picking up their own niche and it's diversifying the whole culture of barbering. Now you have barber battles and barbering competitions that it's pushing barbers now to really find the artist within themselves rather than just a eh, haircut, that'll be 10 bucks. You know, now you want to get, you're trying to find more within yourself and your own talent. True, very true. Yourself, Roland, what's your take? Uh, personally, just that it's opened up a lot of doors for me with um, education. I've been, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, to some places where I never thought I would, you know, ever visit, and um, I don't know, just, uh, it, I mean, it makes me feel good, you know, that I can take care of my family and, you know, doing something that I like, and, um, you know, and a lot of people can't say that, you know, that they go to the work or whatever, you know, to me, I don't come to work, you know, I just come to do something that I like, I don't, you know, I haven't worked in five years, so. I like that comment. You've been making your vocation your vacation. Yep. yep. So tell me then, how with so many barbers in the shop and with so many cheers, how does everyone in here stay on the same page? Well, there's 13 of us, and I mean, here you can pretty much sit in every in any chair, and you're gonna get a good haircut. But you know, there's 13 of us, and if, especially if the barber that's down there, if you know he does a haircut. The, the guy's gonna have to walk all the way over here to pay and everybody's gonna look at his haircut. So, you know, to me that keeps everybody, you know, you know, they wanna do a good haircut on the guy because when you bring him up in the front, everybody's gonna look, that's the first thing everybody does is look at the haircut. So, you know, no, knowing that there's good barbers here, you try to, you try, your, you know, to give a good haircut because if not, you know we're all gonna call you out on it. <laughs> okay, so this can be like the, the longest road yeah. for all barbers and you know that once once the, the clients finish their haircut and they walk down here, you're on the judging panel after every single solitary haircut. Okay, no worries. Yeah, you, and none of the barbers kind of want to slip down the league. They want to stay in the Premier League. We have like a, at least a line that we have to at least stay at. And it's true, because we will, that's, that's us. That's one of the big things in the shop. We call each other out. We have no shame about it, but that's part of it's that uh, constructive criticism, you know. If we see something, we'll call it out and say, "Hey, you know, this is that." Or, "Hey, what's up with that haircut?" We have a term, "molly wop." You know, you mess someone up. "Hey, what's that molly wop?" And that's our code for ourselves. Like, we know you could have did better. You know? <laughs> we know you could have did better than that. And that, but that's it's good for us because that keeps us like, you know what? I need to make sure I'm doing great cuts no matter what. All of us stay very uh, on tune with our haircuts because we have to be. Not, and not only because of uh, our own pride, but because of accountability. And I think that's probably one of the things that does not keep a, us alive. And too, not, on, not only the barbers are going to look the haircuts, but every other client that's sitting in the other chairs, they're going to see your haircut, you know? So, you know, maybe they're going to want to be in your chair next time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take nobody's time, you know? But, you know, that's a, like, it's advertisement too, you know? They're going to be walking down the street. You know, you want to give them a good haircut, so because a lot of my clients too, they come from word of mouth too. Mm -hmm. They go, you know, they're walking down the street and they ask, "Oh, where'd you get your haircut?" You know, American Barbershop rolling. They come over here. Yeah, those are our walking billboards. Okay, and how instrumental do you think you know the likes of Instagram and Facebook are in promoting yourselves and the shop, and more importantly, putting pound, uh, sorry, dollars into your pocket? <laughs> 
I definitely think uh, Instagram has, and social media in general, has definitely provided a new outlet for people to find what they need. Um, I know a lot of our clients, the minute they sit in the chair, it's no longer a lookbook. You know, they'll go through our Instagram to go, I want a haircut like this. And boom, it's easy access. Rather than having flip through pages, they can just scroll down. Uh, I definitely won't dismiss word of mouth that like we were speaking about. That's definitely what brings us most of our money, but I can definitely can say uh, social media does also help. Any type of marketing that you get, especially free marketing with social media, you can't go wrong with it. Okay. And yourself, Roland, how instrumental is it for you? Um, it's, it, work, it, it works really good because I want to say at, at least you know, 50 to 65% of the clientele that I have comes from Instagram, just from, uh, you know, hashtags. You know, I, I try to keep it local. I never try to, you know, just so, you know, local people could see my work, you know, and come and ask for me. But it, it really does help. And, um, but, you know, the way it is now, it's like too, to me, it's too saturated with, you know, a lot of stuff and, you know, now I just want to use it just for just for business, you know, all the showing off and, you know, all these cool haircuts, you know, everybody's doing it. But, you know, I just want to use it now just for to get, you know, more people to come get the haircut by me. OK, so talking about now, what's the future for you and what's the future for you with the American Barbershop, Roland? I mean, I'm sure George knows that all of us, we're not going to be here forever, you know? Everybody has their goal, everybody has their own um, thing they want to do, so, you know, we'll see. Um, but, you know, eventually, of course, I want my own shop too, you know, to leave something for my kids, you know, so they can have when I'm not around. Well said. And yourself, Mike? Currently, it'll be Echo Park as soon as we open. That'll be my next location, and I'll venture off into a Los Angeles to do Echo Park location, kind of grow my business out there and see where that takes me. Like Roland said, we all kind of definitely have a knack for and an ability to open up our own our own shops. But as for right now, or with uh, American Barbershop, I definitely see myself for the next few years just kind of venturing through Los Angeles and making my mark there and see where the rest takes me. Any international plans for the pair of you? Oh, absolutely. Why not? No, the sky's the limit. The thing is, the thing that I've learned from cutting hair is I, I started from Northern California. I moved out here. From here I moved to Miami. From Miami to Orlando. Orlando back out here. And it's all this cutting hair. So why not take us to, you know, the UK, take us to Australia, take us to New Zealand. It really can take us anywhere. It's just the only thing that puts limits is ourselves. How far we want to take it. You know, so if we find ourselves with plans to be able to go do something or we want to go do something, then it's just making it happen. Gentlemen, Roland. Mike, thank you very much for giving me your time. I know you've, you've come in on your day off just to have an interview with me, so I really appreciate that, uh, Mike. And Roland, also thank you for inviting me in your shop and the hospitality you've given me. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Well, you're thank you. Time. Thank you.